Gusan Legacy, Chiang Mai. Beautiful. Easily one of the prettiest back nines I've played in Thailand. Today, I'm joined by Brian, a subscriber, a player, and the Canadian Rick Shields. Brian is a 28 handicapper and hadn't touched a club in four months before coming to Thailand. He's been playing for two Canadian seasons, and we all know Canadian golf season is about three weeks long. So, he is a newbie who has been fervently watching the channel. I'm a 5 handicap, but in this video, Brian will be telling me what to do and guiding me around the golf course with nothing but a scorecard and a course guide he stole from the caddy. Will a player who watches this channel be able to guide me better than I can guide myself? On the opener, I agree with this club choice. The only difference is I would aim a bit further right. To the left of the pin, there's that bunker. Go like at that so bunker. The green side bunker. Yeah. Okay. Uh, leg with what? How far? Uh, two thirty, two twenty-five. Okay. Uh, leg C. Going full on. Full on at the, at the green side bunker. <laughs> I don't. I don't think shape matters here, but maybe a fade. Keep it away from it's everything. I'm fading it. Yeah. That's only like 15 yards. Behind it, it looks like it drops off pretty aggressively. Uh -huh. So go to the right edge of that front bunker and shorter is better, but middle of the green. Okay. Much it, yeah. Yeah, see the caddy told me left. That's what I'm yeah. saying. I'm gonna compare now with this. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. No, you're you're right. I I couldn't see I, I it looked I I kept, I originally thought this side, and then I looked again and I was freaking out. <laughs> I want you to go one hundred in. So I'm four hundred and fifty. So I need to hit three hundred and thirty yards. <laughs> Never mind. What's your pitching wedge? Your pitching wedge is 140. 140? We'll go driver. Where is the flag? Dog leg left. Dog leg left. Dog leg left. Just give me. Where do you want it to finish? To the left of the bunkers, okay? This is a tough hole because it's quite long, so I'm forced to hit driver. I haven't been hitting a draw with it lately, and even though I tried to execute his idea, I couldn't quite get it right. It's the right idea indeed. Brian didn't know I had a root under the ball. Here's a big difference in the way different handicaps look at the play of a hole. The lie. The way the ball lies on whatever material it is on is the dimension with one of the biggest discrepancies between handicaps. Now, that's not to say that a high, mid or low handicapper should look at it the same way, but knowing how the ball and club will react to the ground conditions is one of the least talked about aspects in amateur golf. But when I play with pros, they always talk about the lie. The lie of the ball on the ground is of utmost importance to the selection of the shot. More on that later. This tree root forced the ball to pop up and land short. I would have hit an 8 iron and let it pop up high and bound forward a little more. Would the result be different? But the result of Brian's idea was also good enough. Go and get a chip first. I say go at the pin. With what? 168. 168. Seven? Seven iron. Jet. In the 
hole. Sit down. Sit down. Yeah. Oh. That like that that bump? Yeah. Yeah. So I guess me, Kong, man. Me. I'm gonna have a look at this. There's 283 up there. Oh yeah. So, so, so straight, straight up at that. With the two. Yeah. Main two. <laughs> So the caddy has told me to go at the little red flag on the green, about three yards left of it, 108 yards, 54 degree. The last thing I look at must be that little red flag, not the main flag. This second nine at Gassan Legacy may be one of the prettier nines I've seen in Thailand. Uh, I, so you're saying go 200? Yeah, 200 gets you to the biggest... Brian had the course guide in his hands and was telling me I would clear that water easily. I didn't believe him, so I smashed the two iron. Actually, it cleared very easily. Regardless of the trust factor of not knowing anything yourself and having someone else tell you what is the actual problem. Why do we clam up when there's water, Oscar Bravo or big hazards around? I wanted to see what would happen if I hit my driver. That was what I would have done, but that's because I thought it was 240 yards to carry the water. Of course, I try hit it hard. So we clam up, lose confidence, worry about external things, and that leads to us hitting harder with less control, thereby fulfilling our deepest desire. Yes, we're scared of losing the ball, but secretly, maybe we want to lose it. I mean, we only do things we want to do in life. The ball is not ours. The ball is not permanent. It's in our care for as long as we keep it. And we will lose golf balls. Why do we let the fate of a golf ball affect our decisions, lives, and egos? Don't we understand that even after taking a drop, we can still save par or bogey? We've got 66, what do you think? I'd say to essentially almost try to land it in the hole because if you go high, it'll just pick up speed and roll all the way back down. So is that That's good or bad? Bad. So 66. But if you go in the pin, it's you're already past the slope, so it'll stay relatively close. Okay, so you reckon 66 on, on the hole and it should, it should avoid any slope there, huh? 66, how do we hit 66? That feels good. <laughs> That's my fault. <laughs> say because maybe that's why I didn't come up the right distance because maybe in my mind I was like saying I can't do 66 it's gonna bound into off the green for me 
I would have rather pitched it here than I was between the two. So, but but that, oh. right. So the right side of the green is massive and it seems to slope down towards the pin. So I would go over the middle hump. You want to go over the, the hump? A uh, hundred yards. hundred yards. Okay. I tried again to get the exact result that Brian was looking for. He read the slope from the tee perfectly and I just missed it on the second attempt. If I had hit one yard to the left, we would have been next to the cup. Come on, come on, come on. Let's see where it ends up. So what I think Brian was trying to do was exactly what I did on the second ball and that was to get it to hit the slope just over that mound over there, which I nearly did. I mean, I just probably missed the slope by maybe three feet too far to the right. And actually with the speed of the greens, this thing may have come down probably to somewhere around here at best. I went and I pulled it a little bit because obviously I get the pin in my mind because it's a short distance. And it's actually landed here. This is, the, this is the soft 500 and look at it spin back to there. That's amazing. That bunker. Or or short of it, like short of that bunker. Okay, well, it's 260 into the bunker, 270. If, if you can clear it, yeah. it'd be better to clear it. But I don't know if you feel that you can. Yeah, sure, okay. I can try. The one on the right. The little one. Yeah, sure, okay. Driver. Brian tested my comfort level here. This was the biggest difference in shot selection so far. I would take two iron here every time and hit it at the bunker on the right. I can never reach it and the fairway is nice and fat there. The driver brings all the bunkers into play, and I don't like fairway bunker shots inside 100 yards. I genuinely don't know how to read this. Like this is this is a roller coaster of a green. Okay. Uh, behind. Oh oh oh! What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clean it, man. Clean it, man. Yes, the only thing is safe back there. So, would it be better to go right? Because that's the flattest. I would say, I don't know, I mean, up to you. What do you think, right or left? It's up to you. I'll go wherever. Okay, in this possible, I feel like it's right. Okay. So, front edge of the hill, so that it, like the hill will take some speed off of it, okay. or if it's short, then you're at least in the flat area. Okay, uh, leg jet, seven iron, splash. That's exactly what I asked for. I would have tried to get this ball onto the back That's left of the green like or toward the middle of the green. Behind the green was a steep slope into Neverland. On the right, we would be chipping up the hill to a pin cut tight on the front. In every situation in golf, there is a way to escape. Sometimes we have a wide margin and sometimes we have a tight margin of error. Brian told me to chip it into a patch of grass two yards short of the green. He knew I could only let it bounce once before the green because of the tropical grass. The first attempt missed it and overshot his mark by a yard. I tried it again and he was 100% on the money with his shot selection. This type of precision takes a lot of practice though. This is not a shot you'll see many high handicappers pulling off. And that's what I love. We can all see the shot, but all we have to do is practice. Practice landing a ball in a spot and we'll all be able to execute these shots first time round. Like yes, even think, you. Like, the hole's about here. center of all three of those bunkers with yeah. your driver there is no chance you're getting in them and you will land to the biggest part of the fairway okay i was hesitant to hit driver because i couldn't see a thing positive about it 
Brian knew I could clear the bunkers and land it on the fairway, I just could not commit to it and hit a Puffy's pull fade into the fairway bunker. This was the correct play by Brian. I just couldn't commit. Out from the sand, what are we doing? We've got the... So... What's over the green? Uh, a deep bunker. Oh, okay. That bunker can hold it up, that's fine. But that, that's to take into consideration the, the, the carry. The left side is wider. The lighter trees to the left of the pin. Okay, so we're going at the green. Yeah. Okay. But the lighter, like the left side. Le Lexi. Okay, so we, we're going to try carry 199. 199, actually. Yeah. Sorry. Now let's go with it. When we looked back on the round, Brian and I could not find the best play here. We figured the best play would be to hit a 40 or 50 yard shot out of this bunker and leave me a third shot into the green with a wedge or 9 iron. There's too much risk up the left side. The green is a thin little thing, so we need a high lofted shot into it. Beautiful bougainvilleas flowering, got these, I think they're called fire trees, I'm not sure with the orange. Got some yellowy kind of trees like this, just so beautiful out here. I'm a bit of a nature fundy myself, so I'm maybe a bit biased. Um, from that bunker there, we didn't have much option. I was heading to a panty liner of a fairway there. This is still 180, 185 yards to get to there. So I don't really mind that play. We've hit the bank and we've rolled back in. So we're allowed to drop up here. It hit up here. It hit up here. And then it rolled down into the hazard. And that means we can drop up here because the hazard line is up here. It's a red stake. We drop where it landed. Show me, I'll go. The light blotchy bit. You go. You show me. And I'll get it there. And tell me where my imaginary hole is. I think it'll catch the slope here. Okay. So okay. here, but like it's gonna carry it. It's down. It's down. So must I must I let it start dying there? Yeah. Okay. That is exactly what I was thinking. I was just wrong. Dude, that's not bad. That is not bad. I was not seeing that. That, that slope was going to take it in if I had hit a bit firmer. Deep in thought, I can see the smoke coming out of his ears. 155, wind off the left. Okay. I think you go over the right bunker because if it starts to come back, that bunker, like the slope will catch it or give it some room to slow down and stop. Okay. What am I hitting? How, what distance? 155 would be your. But am I hitting 155 or long or short or what? Um. Play at 160. Okay, 160. Okay, 160. Uh, let's play up. We learned a few things from this round. One, Brian had very similar thinking to me. He learned from my videos and he guided me like a true boss. Two, Brian got a major boost of confidence to know he could guide someone to what could have been a level par nine holes. He proved it's not his thinking, but the execution that he will need to work on. Three, I learned to let go of consequences entirely. Who cares what happens? Just go play the ball. After playing with Brian for a couple of days and seeing how he got a little frustrated with himself, it was easy to see where the disconnect comes from for high handicappers and new players. He guided me around the course like a true player. I didn't execute on everything 100%, but that's my fault. His guidance was spot on for a level par score over nine holes. The frustration comes from knowing what to do, but not being able to do it. I understand that players, but if you're a newer player or high handicapper, it takes time, it takes practice, and it takes effort. I advise Brian to see a professional to help him find a one-way miss. 
Some lessons for him as a new player will really help him to get that feeling of consistency so he can be confident on the tee and when there is trouble around. He will be able to execute on the shots he can already see. He showed he can see them by telling me to do them. Brian also seems to be a perfectionist. I was a perfectionist and I gave up golf three times. Perfectionism must be squashed if we are to be the players we were meant to be. Golf is not a game of perfect is an excellent book. Read it and realize if you could be perfect at golf, you'd score no higher than 49 for 18 holes. Now think of all that would entail. Lol, it's okay to be imperfect. It's more fun that way.